Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you a hidden feature for drawing complex shapes and polygons in GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.24 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com for free software, tutorials, and help articles. You can also get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design, and you can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So many of you are probably aware that GIMP already has some shape selection tools for drawing shapes in GIMP, such as the ellipse or rectangle select tool. There's also some freehand tools like the free select tool as well as the paths tool. However, none of these tools are great at drawing complex polygons like a hexagon, pentagon, or a star shape. Luckily though, GIMP does have a built-in hidden feature that allows you to draw these shapes without using any of the shape selection tools. So here I am inside of GIMP. I have this set up to a lighter theme. The reason for that is that this filter is an older filter, which means it doesn't really show up that well inside of dark mode for GIMP. So I do recommend changing your settings here by going to edit, preferences, and under interface, for theme, go with system, and for icon theme, go with symbolic inverted, or you can go with legacy or color, doesn't really matter, and I'll click okay. Once that's set up, I'll hit Control N to create a new document. And I'll just go with 1920 by 1080 for my dimensions and click OK. So the filter we'll be using can be accessed by going to Filters, Render, Gfig, So here is the dialog for this filter. You'll see a little preview window here. This does represent the full size of your canvas. The units are probably not going to match up for you like you could see here for mine. So the units do not correspond to one another here as far as I know. But the top left does correspond to the top left here of my canvas and the bottom right of my canvas will correspond to the bottom right of the preview window. You'll also see we have tool options on the right side so these will change based on the tool we have selected here along the top. And you also have an option to either stroke the line that you're going to draw with these tools or you can fill them in or you can do both. You also have an option to show a grid and finally an option to snap to that grid. And that's just going to allow you to more easily draw your shapes and align them here based on the grid. That being said, the first four tools here are to draw simple shapes or lines. So you've got your line tool, rectangle, circle, or ellipse. After that is where the useful tools start with this. So you've got the ability to draw an arc. So I'll click on this tool and what I can do with this is just click to create a starting point. And there you can see it's going to give us a live preview here on the canvas. Click to create a middle point for this arc. And come over here and click to create the final point. And there you'll see it'll draw an arc with those points we created. So there's going to be an arc in between each point, in between each set of points. And it's going to pass through that middle point. Also, the stroke that I've created here is going to be whatever your brush head is set to right here. And you can always change this brush head. It's going to give you this little dialog. In my testing, the opacity doesn't work for me. But you can come over here and change the type of brush you're using. And that will update that in real time. So let's just come here to a hard brush. And come over here and click Close. So you can either hit Control-Z to undo drawing that, or you can come over here and use the Delete an Object icon. But I'll move on to the next icon, which is to create a regular polygon. So I'll click on that, and let's just center this up a bit. So here in the tool options, you'll see we now have a slider for sides. So if we start with three, that's just going to allow us to draw a triangle. So when I click and drag this, we can draw the triangle. I can draw this point here, this black point, so that it snaps to the grid, and that allows us to have a nice straight triangle, and I can release. However, I can also increase the number of sides here, so if I go with something like five, that's gonna draw a pentagon. So I'll click and drag, and there you can see our pentagon shape. Again, we can use those grids to create a straighter shape here and release. So as you move up in number of sides, it changes the polygon you're drawing. So for example, if I go to six, it'll draw a hexagon. But let's just grab the Delete an Object tool and delete both of these. 
So next up here, you have the star tool. And once again, it's gonna give you a number of sides in the tool options, so I can click and drag. It'll start with three by default. If you want a more traditional star, you can go with five, and that'll create a five point star. And you also have the ability to draw a spiral as well as a Bezier curve. I don't recommend either one of these because the lines come out kind of shaky. For example, I'll draw this spiral and there you'll see the shaky lines. And the Bezier curve tool is not really as good as the path tool in my opinion. They both do similar things, if not the same thing. But let's grab the delete an object icon and just click to delete that spiral. So the next two icons here, the first one is to move the entire object. So when I click that icon, I can click on either of these shapes and that allows me to move either of these to a new position. And the next icon is to move a single point. So when I click on that, it allows me to change the dimensions of this shape based on that single point. So for example, with the star tool here, we can expand the star out. And same with this here, we can expand it out or we can bring it back in a bit. And the next icon next to that allows us to duplicate an object. So it's called copy an object here. When I click on this and then click on any of the points here of one of these objects and drag and release. Now you'll see we have two of those. So that's just a way to duplicate your shapes. And I feel like the session in here is getting pretty long. So I'm getting a little worried. So I'm just going to close it out to keep it from crashing. While I have this closed out, I do want to point out that although it's drawing these shapes and it appears to create a path inside of the gfig filter dialog, if I come over here to paths, it's not actually gonna draw a path here. I will demonstrate a sort of workaround for this momentarily. There is a pretty cool non-destructive aspect to this filter, which is that as long as you are clicked on your original gfig layer and you have not modified it, and your gfig filter has not crashed at any point, which is pretty common. You can reopen the gfig dialog and re-edit these shapes. So let me show you what I'm talking about. On this gfig layer, I'll go to filters, render, gfig. So here you can see I can open this dialog back up and here are our shapes and these are editable. So the next icon here is going to be the select an object icon. I do not recommend clicking that because for me it has caused my filter to crash multiple times when testing this out. So that appears to be a problem here inside of this. And the rest of these icons have to do with selecting an individual shape and changing the stacking order here of the shapes. And you can also change which shape is selected here using these arrows. So you can either go to the previous object you drew using the left arrow, or you can go to the more recent object you drew using the right arrow. And then from there, you can tweak this object if you want using any of the tools. The last object here allows you to show all the objects on your composition. And I'll come over here and grab the delete an object icon or the tool and just delete all of these. So now I'll show you how to get some practical use out of this filter by drawing the shapes and then converting those shapes to paths, which you can then scale up or down and pretty much have them act as vector shapes. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna grab my star tool here. Let's increase the number of sides to five. And I'm just gonna click and drag this and align that top point there so that it snaps to the guide here or snaps to the grid and release. So I don't like having the stroke here because you can't really edit the stroke. It's basically the same size here, even if you go into your paintbrush and try to change the options, the size options. So what I like to do is hide the stroke and come down here to fill. And I'm gonna change the fill to color fill. You can also go with the pattern or any of these gradient options, but I'm just gonna go with color fill. And then I'm gonna fill this shape in with black and click okay. So there you'll see we have our star shape now. And so now I'm gonna close this out. And now I'm going to alt click on this gfig layer and that's gonna create a selection around my shape pixels. If the alt click doesn't work, you can go to layer, transparency, alpha two selection. And if that still doesn't work, make sure your alpha channel is unlocked here. But once you have a selection area around your star, you can come over here to the paths tab Come down here and click this icon to convert this to a path. So selection a path. Control Shift A to deselect that. 
And now when I unhide this path, you'll see we now have a path in the shape of a star. And now we can do to this path what we do with any path. So for example, I can grab my path tool, click on this, and you can see all the nodes here I can customize. I can also create a selection from the path, and I can do that over here using the icons as well. This is the selection icon. I can fill the path with any color, or I can create a stroke. And the reason I like doing this is the stroke path option here is much more customizable than it is inside of the gfig filter. So I do recommend using the stroke path option here instead. So let me hit control shift A to deselect that. Come over here to layers, create a new layer, and I'll name this star stroke. Hit the enter key. And let's change our foreground color. So let's go with red. And now when I click stroke path, let's just change the options here. So I'll go with five as the line width. We're using a solid color. Line style, we'll just go with the standard line. So you can always come here and choose line. And I'll click stroke. So now when we select a different tool and make sure we hide the path here, you'll see now we have a nice clean star stroke. And that's just one example. I can also unhide this. Shift S to grab the scale tool. And so long as my transform option here is set to path, I can scale this up or down. And I can use any of the scale tools so long as I have the transform mode set to path and perform any sort of operations here to this path. So obviously there are a ton of possibilities with this tool. Just keep in mind that it does tend to crash. So be very careful when you are operating with this, especially inside of longer sessions. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.